You only just opened Skype now? Way to be well, no, prepared. To load your your particular window. It's the fucking advertisements on Skype. Have you seen those? There's ads all over Skype these days. No, I pretty much only use Skype for this. For this? Uh, no, there's ads all over Skype. It's it's annoying as shit. Oh, yeah, that's annoying. I'm annoyed enough it ads on Twitter. Like I don't I can't have a fucking Twitter background anymore, but I can look at 62 sponsored tweets a day for shit I don't care about. I know. But I can't have my background. Which is it's in the worst part that's about that. Bullshit. The worst part about that is they pick that glaring. I, I would like, can I turn it to black at least or you a know, darker color? Burn the fuck out of your monitor white or nothing. Why would you do that? That's just, it's just, a, I mean, give me a choice. Give me yeah. a fucking At least let me pick the color I want. No, it's just monitor burn white. I have noticed. Ah, oh, there she is. There she is. God damn it. She looks just so displeased to be any part of this nonsense at she all. She has resting bitch face. She pretty much looks displeased always. Well, it's not that. She she obviously she avoids oh, oh, the camera. Oh, oh she's looking did at you the just, Did you just accidentally look at the camera? <laughs> did you just participate? No, not me. No. no, I didn't. Fuck you. She actually came in here looking for me. Maybe she's starting to embrace stardom. <laughs> Oh, look, we're actually like looking in the general direction of the camera. What, did, goodness. W would it help if I like dangled some string or something? Maybe you got your keys. Hey, I mean, Mirka, oh. <laughs> Mirka, Mirka. I mean, what am I doing? Deaf, so talking to her will do. Fuck what the her. fuck am I doing? I'm dangling string for a cat on. What the fuck am I doing? What the shit am I doing with myself? Are we done? We're all done? Okay. okay. <laughs> all right. Here. She made that just so, such an unhappy noise. Like, she just follows me around grunting at me all day. That's what she does. When she first sees you, she like gives you the head nod and grunts at you like, sup? <laughs> yeah, no, daddy went to bed. There's nowhere else to go. You're stuck with me. And she gives the internet her butt. Giving us all the butt. Well. But yeah, she doesn't really come in this room because there's nothing for her here. So the fact that she actually came in here and started crying, I was like, what are you doing here? Is it time to be on the internet yet? Well, yes, it is. Yes, it is, because it is that time and shit is awful. I, I I sell my show so well. It's that time again. <laughs> shit's awful. Woohoo! Shit's awful. Hey. It's like Janine from Ghostbusters. That's cool. Thank you. That's Each good thing, week, Catherine, the Radio Dead Air audience, go out on the worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible stuff, bring it back here for a little stuff we like to call "What the fuck is wrong with you?" She's just like, no. At least face this way. <laughs> She doesn't want to. I, I can't really blame her. That's right. We'll make her happy. We'll do face scratches. <laughs> oh, we love face scratches. Yeah. She's yeah. not exactly sure what to do right now. Yeah. Or we could give you thumper foot and scratch your ear. No, this one. She's like, what are you doing? You're doing it wrong. <laughs> Oh, we're going to start off this week with probably one of my favorite headlines we've gotten on here. I, I because. A lot. Do you mind? <laughs> Are you all done? Do you mind? Um, this. I, it came about because I'm pretty sure they had no other way to phrase what happened. But, oh, they found a way to, to at least muddle through. Comes to, it's Ikea. Dane commits genital vandalism in Ikea. Isn't that the name of a couch from Ikea? Genital vandalism. Gen genitalia vandalism. Genitalia vandalism. That's actually my burlesque name. Genitalia vandalism. Yeah. 
A 31-year-old man from Alborg has been convicted for a fairly bizarre act of vandalism on Tuesday. On a visit to the local Ikea at Alborg, the man had taken one of the store's wooden pencils and proceeded to casually stroll through the warehouse, drawing small penises on the walls and pieces of furniture on display. He drew up to 30 penises on walls and shelves around the warehouse. I mean, they do give you those little pencils. They have to kind of expect it. Ikea staff eventually caught up with the vandal who had left a trail of crudely drawn genitalia in his wake and reported him to police. This is the second best thing to happen in the Ikea since the monkey in the shearling coat. I Do never you remember the Ikea monkey. I remember. I, his jaunty little coat. I never thought I'd get to lose this, use this line in context on my show, but I get to. Who's been drawing dicks? You didn't think you'd get to use that line? I didn't. On this show? I didn't. Where a kid mowed a dick into his high school football field? Who's been drawing dicks? Who's been, who's been drawing dicks? What the fuck, man? The really clever thing would be to go into the warehouse part and open the boxes and like surreptitiously draw dicks on the unassembled furniture so you don't know until you get it home and put together your <laughs> Flurgan Vervin TV stand and there's a dick. <laughs> suddenly, suddenly penis. Suddenly penis. Why? What the fuck? Okay, look. Don't tell me you've never thought about it. Don't tell me you haven't walked around the Ikea. I haven't! A little tiny pencil and been like, I could draw a dick on some stuff. I haven't! I have never been anywhere and given any writing implement and gone, and the first thing that popped into my mind is, I'm gonna put dicks on everything. That's never happened to me. Well, then I'm not sure you can call yourself an American meta heterosexual male. Now, when my friends are passed out, drunk, and there's a Sharpie, <laughs> and they have a forehead, that's a different story. That's an obligation. I think that's in the Constitution. I don't think that's in the Constitution, no. Are you sure? Pretty sure. Because, and I say that because, the Founding Fathers did not have Sharpies. Are you sure I couldn't work it into that Second Amendment thing somehow? That would be a better Second Amendment. <laughs> <laughs> Way better Second Amendment. The right to draw dicks on drunk people. Have we accepted our fate? No. Oh. No. Oh. We'll take some chin scritches as payment for exploitation. Okay. I mean, why, why? You the... on me. <laughs> why would you do this in the Ikea? I don't know why you find this so hard to understand. I do. It's just like. Men draw dicks on things. <laughs> Men are obsessed with your own tackle. <laughs> and I don't, though. And flash it and draw it everywhere. I don't, though. I don't do this. It, it's it's not a... Man, if, if I had, like... No, me, I would be drawing, like, uh, that Kilroy was here thing from, like, World War II on shit. you never seen that? No. That was, it, was, it was this little graffiti that the soldiers used to draw all over Europe. It was, like, little guy with a nose looking over a wall, and it would say Kilroy was here next to it. That's what I, or I would put like, uh, I would put Frodo lives on shit because I am a tremendous nerd. Yeah. Yeah. I would do that. I wouldn't draw it. I would, you know, I'd be like, you know, you know who probably is behind this? Who? Banksy. <laughs> this is Banksy's latest avant-garde installation. Ikea actually paid a lot of money for this cross promotion with Banksy. Everyone, man, everyone loved Banksy till he till he took aim at Disney, and then suddenly, oh, oh right. fuck People you! Are so angry. Fuck you, Banksy! I love Disney. I love Disney, Banksy. I kind of want to go there. Disneyland, yeah. Uh, Dixmaland. There you go. Before Dismaland, it was always, you know, 
Banksy, he's so interesting and he takes on corporate interests and he really reflects my views. Fuck you! I love Disney! I love Disney! Suck my dick! You know, it was... It... Well. Now, you... Okay, moving right along. Let's go going to Phoenix for this one because, of course, Arizona. It's the new Florida. You would think... When you get out of jail, you would not want to go back for a long time, presumably ever. Actually, there's, I think it's an actual psychological thing that there are people that can't, like, have a phobia of freedom and do want to go back because it's familiar to them. Well, maybe that's this guy because, holy shit, what the fuck, dude? Man released from jail tries to steal Mariposa County Sheriff's Office vehicle. Deputies say he got out of the 4th Avenue jail and tried to steal a Sheriff's Office vehicle. They arrested 29-year-old David Spurlock, who had just been arrest released on drug charges. Surveillance video shows Spurlock running around the jail exterior after his release. He then went over to the marked vehicle so it was clearly marked this is a sheriff's car and was back he made inside the cabin wasn't able to start the truck deputies took him into custody he told them he was going to sell the truck for money now spurlock is back in jail facing burglary charges maybe he needed a ride home no he said he was going to sell the oh, truck for the money way. Shut up, shut up, shut up. It's, ooh, and it's froze on this picture of a lady holding popsicles to her face in a very porny way. But why would, why, why, why would you? Were you she was hoping to recreate like Lady Gaga's telephone video <sighs> and Beyonce was supposed to be outside in the pussy wagon, but she wasn't, so he just had to improvise. Was he sitting in jail waiting to get out and go, you know what? I got a great idea. They're never going to see this coming. You know what? He's right. They probably did not see that coming. It's like, it's the perfect crime. They'll never anticipate it. I mean, I think, you know, Grand Theft Auto is not the best in prison recreational activity. <laughs> They probably shouldn't. They should probably just stick to Tetris. Well, no, because that might help you get out. Oh, Maricopa. Why was I was saying Mariposa? It's Maricopa. I was oh saying. Oh my God, this is Maricopa County. Yeah. You know where that is, right? Yeah, Joe Arpaio. Yeah. That's where that crazy fucking psycho who makes them live in tents and wear pink underwear. I was saying Mariposa because I was thinking. Why would you fucking... want to go back to that jail? That's horrible. I was thinking fucking Fallout. God, that's something else entirely. Yeah, the, the, well, that, yeah, you're pointing out, why would you want to go back to the Maricopa County Jail? That is hell. Yeah. You would think the first thing you would do is walk, is run, not walk the fuck away. Not, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to make money by selling one of their sheriff's cars. Actually, Who it makes a little sense now. You probably just wanted the fucking air conditioning. He's probably like, dude, no, no, I, I'm not taking the car. I'm just so hot. I've not experienced comfort in so long. Why? Of all the... And who the fuck is going to buy it from you? It's got Maricopa County Sheriff's Office. That's like, you know, that, that, that's like trying to, to sell a used TIE fighter. Yeah. People aren't really good about fucking with the Empire, you know? But it's got all the gear still in it. <sighs> that shit's valuable uh... and trackable. Speaking of trackable, there's been a lot of controversy uh, lately about these red light cameras, especially in Chicago. There was a big lawsuit about this 
this kickback scheme a local politician had with a red light camera company. And there was like a $300 million lawsuit going on. It's a big deal. People really don't like these red light cameras with, with a lot of good reason, especially that they don't really seem to cut down on traffic accidents so much as generate revenue. Fair enough. However, it's still a crime to fuck with one. So, of course, committing a crime, first thing you're going to do, put it on Facebook. God damn it. Center Reach, New York. Stephen Ruth of Center Strong Reach, Island. Long Island. Long Island. Strong Island, yo. Apparently got tired of getting tickets after trying to beat red lights at intersections. So police said Ruth, 42, older than us. Old enough to know better. Did something about it and then bragged about it on Facebook. Ruth is in custody, accused of four counts criminal tampering after police discovered his Facebook videos that were going viral on the web. On the videos, Ruth is seen using a selfie stick to record himself armed with a painter's pole to push the red light camera face up toward the sky. Quote, I want you to stop for a minute and assemble that mental image. The selfie I stick. I want you to stop and picture this fucking asshole. And, and we, with a painter's pole in one hand and a selfie stick in the other, like, hurt, hurt, fuck the police. The, and this is his picture. This, this is his picture there. So, yeah, he really does kind of look. He's grinning in his, his lineup photo. Anyone who grins in their lineup photo, a little bit of a dick. I have, I have a cousin who's a Suffolk County cop. I should ask him about this. <laughs> Quote, all it took was a pair of balls and a painter's pole. Ruth and a selfie notes, stick. As he tampers with a camera. And a total of zero brain cells, because you put that shit on Facebook like a fucking moron. Let's just throw the evidence out there for the world to see. We're going to commit a crime? Here's a great idea. Let's put the evidence on the internet. And of course it went viral. Obviously. Son of a... You tremendous imbecile. Ruth tells the camera, I'm going to show you how easy it is to take the camera back. Take the, the, power, the back. power back. Wow. I, I can read good to take the power back. After he defaces the camera, he noted that he saved taxpayers $10,000 for that particular day. Well, no, no, you didn't because that camera is still running. It's still fucking operational. Yeah. It's just not paying for itself now. However, taxpayers are now going to have to pay to house your ass in jail. Yep. Nice one. Bet this motherfucker asked for a public defender. <sighs> do, you know, do you know Whitey Bulger did that? Who? Whitey Bulger. It's Someone? like the... Big Irish Boston mobster, like the last of the great Irish gangsters. I'm not versed really? on my Irish criminals. The Johnny Depp movie is coming out next month. I'm not. He was a big Irish crime boss out of Boston. Total fucking asshole. Total <laughs> psycho. Like, you know, it, they based the character of Frank Costello from The Departed, Departed very loosely on him. He got arrested. He finally got caught after like. 20 years on the lamb on the most wanted list they know this guy's sitting on millions motherfucker asked for a public defender yeah that's a dick move yeah just because fuck you find some green kid right out of law school to defend me well i'm pretty sure this next guy is gonna need a public defender oh my god I just get through one week. Can I just have one week? One week without a poop story. Just, just one. Just, I'm so tired of the poop. Police, help us identify the Portland pooper. The, the Portland better, pooper. Much better than the wet bandits. We're the wet bandits. No, Marv. No. A Southeast Portland business owner is working to find a man seen defecating near his office several times 
in the past month. Now police are involved in the case. Like in the same spot? Yes. Officers say the man pictured in the flyers post around the city has officially been called a suspect. Many Southeast Portland residents want to know the circumstance by the man who's been captured doing his business outside a building near Southeast 58th and Powell. You're uh, posting the picture with this article, right? Yes. It's a point of view shot while he's doing it. There, And he's got this confused look on his face. Well, he obviously had no, hasn't had enough fiber. Let's put that up. Because they, they planted a hidden camera because he kept going back to the same spot to poop. Maybe they should plant a hidden cop. Find or a, a lot of fucking poison ivy. <laughs> I find and it... Just wait for the ER visit. Um, I find it That's interesting he has... And a lot of fucking poisonous shit. <laughs> wait for him to develop a really embarrassing rash. Katrina Salazar works at nearby Fix Hair Studios said, I find it interesting he has toilet paper with him. It's very pre-planned. You don't just know what's what to ex you just really don't know what to expect around here people they like do their own thing they kind of march to the beat of their own drum i mean it is portland however this is probably some kind of fucking art installation <laughs> or something like it's portland man they fucking make <laughs> their own butter and shit i don't they're all on, like, giant bicycles from the 1880s with big mustaches talking about their artisanal water. It's a different planet. We just, we just look at this picture, though, of this guy. This... Uh, he looks so indignant at the fact they planted a camera to catch him pooping in the bushes. Or he has just not had enough fiber. <laughs> Why it's would you gluten free diet, man? Why would you do this? Why? This seems like a per this seems like one of two things. Either it's personal vendetta. Or. The restroom facilities at his nearby workplace are just not up to snuff. No, it can't do I, I would. I, I would. No, I I would poop in the dirtiest damn bathroom before I would go out behind some building and just poop in the bushes. Or it's some kind of weird fetish thing. I would poop in the horrible bath. I would hover. I would hover poop in the horrible bathroom. It might not be a cleanliness issue. It might be a private privacy issue. Some people don't like pooping around other people. They made a whole running joke out of it on American Pie. Like... It's how less person. public, how less public can you get than pooping in the bushes? Well, I don't know. <laughs> Sandra says the new season of Portlandia got way too weird. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to find out it was Fred Armisen. All along. <clears throat> it was Fred Armisen. Yeah. <laughs> so now when they ca here's the thing because of this, when they catch him, He's going to forever be known as the Portland Pooper. That's probably the goal. When they search, when they search his name on Google from now until eternity, it's always going to come up with, this is going to be in his obituary. He's probably got a fucking Vine channel we just haven't found yet. <laughs> Does Vine do poop channels? Maybe. I don't, I don't do... really understand Vine. I'm old. I just found out this kid. There's this kid. And he lives in L.A. And he is a professional Viner. Yeah, that's a this thing. kid. Got paid eighty thousand dollars by Hefty to feature their their red plastic cups in a Vine, and I'm like, that's more money than I will make in two years. Yeah. And he got it for six seconds. Yeah. What the fuck am I doing wrong? Like, I'm just going to go stick my head in the oven because clearly <laughs> I'm on the wrong path in life. Well, you see, it's not the guy in the vine that you want. You want to work in the advertising department because they get that ridiculous amount of money from these companies who have no idea that advertising really isn't actually all that successful. No, but this guy, it's him personally. 
Like, he personally got paid $80,000 by Hefty to make a six-second vine with their cup in it. We're kind of stupid. America! We have another one from Portland, which is worse. I, I, it's worse than poop. So there, in case hey, at least you... nobody was eating his own poop this time. Oh, thank God! Yes. Like right side, nobody made a poop hot pocket. In case you haven't been keeping track, the western part of America is the fuck on fire. Yeah. There's f every oh. everything is on fire. Just every if you it, the the car's on fire, the cat's on fire, everything is on fire. Everything is on fire. And even even up in uh, Portland, Oregon. I'm say. Not to be an alarmist, and I know the comment section is going to love this because I'm a Luddite and a technology fear monger and stuff. But like, if Donald Trump legit gets a presidential nomination, I'm repenting my sins because it's the motherfucking end times. Yeah. Well, everything's already on fire. Everything's on fire. There's sinkholes. There's tsunamis. If we get Trump, I'm calling that the seventh motherfucking seal. Well, I dare I try and I try and figure out the, the chain of logic here because I just cannot. Wildfire smoke in Portland causes man to start fire in his apartment. What? Michael Downey at first denied to police that he had set paper and metal Look clothes at the hangers. Shot. He's we do. Um <laughs> Paper and metal clothes hangers lying in his northeast Portland uh, Portland oh, apartment. Hangers. A blaze on Saturday, but he quick he quickly admitted, actually, I did. <laughs> the 29 year old explained that he noticed smoke in the air from large wildfires across the state, so he came up with a plan to try and get rid of the haze. He started a fire <laughs> to get rid of the smoke. Do you see what I mean? We're a failed species, man. He over. he started a fire to get rid of the, the wildfire smoke. I I don't even know to say to that. I, I. A neighbor smelled smoke coming from Downey's apartment, pushed Downey's door open, and used water to put out the small fire. The now, here's a question. If the yeah. smoke was so bad already from the wildfire, how yes. did you determine that there was new smoke? <laughs> like, because does plastic... It, does it smell smokier in here to you? There is, there is the, oh, God, the world's on fire that's burning wood smoke. And then there the, there's the, oh, God, my neighbor's an idiot. There's burning plastic smoke. Metal hangers. And Metal hangers burn? No, but they they heat the fuck up and they melt the carpet and that's toxic fumes. Hooray! Was he just having a Joan Crawford moment? No. Who? <laughs> I don't understand this logic. I really... What? This is not how fighting fire with fire actually works. No, that's not what that means. That's not what that at means. At all. And I... <laughs> Started a fire to get rid of the smoke. And, and if you can't see his Clearly, mugshot... he was never a Boy Scout. Look at that mugshot. He, uh, he's like, what are you gonna do? Her burp -a -der. I don't know. I thought it would work. You can actually hear the Price is Right fail sound <laughs> in the background. Look at it that guy. How do you stand before a judge and be like, it was too smoky. So I started like, you know what? They shouldn't even send this guy to jail. They should just sit him down with like Bill Nye. Bill Nye. And like find his 10th grade fucking science teacher. <laughs> what did you teach this boy? And just allow them all to berate him. What did you do to this child? 
Like, they should just sit him down in a room with science people and allow them to belittle him. He's 29! He's 20! He's 20 fucking 9! Wait, wait, wait. I think we have the answer. Downey was booked into the Multnomah County Detention Center on accusations of first-degree arson and unlawful possession of meth. I just started Dan watching Breaking Bad, and we agree there's no upside to meth. There really isn't. I don't understand how people get into meth because it's a drug with literally no upside. You make the meth and shit blows up and you're making toxic chemicals. You take the meth and you go bonkers and you lose all your teeth. And your face rots off. Oh yeah, that's that too, because yeah. Like no. you basically turn into a walking dead extra. Yeah. If you don't blow your fucking head off making it. Yeah, let's do that this week, and that sounds fun. Our last one this week is... I, I think this qualifies as an international incident. One of the stupidest things I have ever fucking heard. I... Folks, if you, if you have aspirin, Tylenol, ibuprofen, put that shit on standby. You're about to need it. Fighter flight escorted by fighter jets after cabin crew put passenger's cat in bathroom and she threatened to, quote, bring the plane down. What? Two fighter jets were scrambled to escort a passenger jet that was forced to make an emergency landing after a woman on board allegedly became unruly over her cat. Passengers on board Condor Airlines flight from Las Vegas to Frankfurt claimed the woman brought her cat onto the plane and became enraged when her pet was put in a laboratory by cabin crew. She allegedly punched a female flight attendant in the face and made threats to, quote, bring the plane down as the midair drama unfolded shortly after takeoff. Pastor said the cat was in the woman's purse when she boarded the Boeing 767. And she did not have a proper carrier for it. Cabin crew promptly decided to place the animal in a bathroom, sparking a confrontation that allegedly turned violent uh, and prompted the emergency landing. Passenger uh, Dashinka Dushinka. Dushinka Gir Giraldo or Giraldo? I'm thinking uh, Giraldo. Giraldo told ABC News she said she was part of the mafia and that the mafia follows her around the world. And she was able to bring the plane down if that needed to be the case, if she couldn't see her cat. I don't think that's the business the mafia's in, first of all. I live in New Jersey now, so I consider myself an expert on these things. I don't think the mafia is in the business of bringing down international flights over a cat. cat. When the woman made the threats, the plane's pilot alerted authorities with two F-16 fighter jets were sent from the, into the air from Buckley Air Force Base in Colorado. The plane landed safely and the woman was removed and questioned by authorities. They, a, that's got to be a really long fucking flight, right? Yes. Uh, Las Vegas to Frankfurt, it's yeah. It's full of kitty litter? Yeah. That's, a, that's at least a 12-hour flight. At Kitty's going to have to do its business at some point. And I can tell you, this little six-pounder shits the size of a softball. I don't know how. I don't know where she gets it. It's insane. So, unless her purse was fitted kitty litter, she was reasonably unprepared. I know, I woke you up. I had to illustrate a point. It's a story about a cat. Also, cats are not known for, you know, being compliant and sitting still in a purse for 12 fucking hours. They're just not like that. Understand. Because we take, rightfully, we take threats to airlines in yeah, the air. Yeah, you fuck with airplanes either. Very seriously. That the United States Air Force had to scramble F-16s. Because and you know, they're not going to let you see your cat in jail. Because of a cat. This is exactly why you don't bring the cat on the plane, because they do this. You hold them for about five minutes and then they're like, I got to go. I got to go. I got to be in the other room right now. We, we. The United States Air Force. 
had to scramble our most advanced fighter jets. Because cat. And I'm, I, I, I love my cat, but goddamn. And the mafia does not care. No, well, they might, but they're not going to bring down a plane over it. They're probably going to be pissed off that you invoked their name yeah. involving the Air Force and the TSA and, you know, international air travel. That's the kind of attention I assume they like to avoid. But Denver Airport spokesman Heath Montgomery said the flight was originally scheduled to resume on Friday, but it was delayed for the night and passengers put up at hotels. Try and explain that shit to them. Well, you see, there was a cat. <laughs> there was a cat and there was a lady and then there was the Air Force. And here's a hotel voucher. And here's the thing. Like, how bad do you feel for that cat right now? Because poor cat those owners oh, when i used God. to work at sephora we had this lady that would always come in with like the saddest looking dog in a dog carrier and you just look at this p poor dog in there and he just had this look on his face like please kill me let it end like this bitch puts pink bows in my hair give me the sweet release of death please my i beg you princess sparkles and i'm a boy like my, my life is constant misery. Please, please just kill me. And you know, she's one of those fuck. If she's carrying her cat on the plane in a purse, this cat's like, for the love of God, somebody save me. Please help me. And when you start punching the flight attendants, you're done. Mm -hmm. That's it. They don't, they don't put up with that shit anymore. No. I, you know, they kind of put up with that shit in the past, but they were kind of jittery about no, it. They, they, put up with no shit these days. You no. give them any reason to believe shit is amiss. And that's it. It's over. And the thing is, Americans are such that we'll applaud them for it. Like, no matter what, no matter how minuscule the problem. Well, we're all still kind of freaked out over this shit, right. obviously. Brought your cat in that was never gonna work out, man. Oh, math is in the channel. What's the trouble? Cat got your flight? I really want to know what her plan was for, you know, feeding and pooping time. Because that's a long ass time to have a cat in a bag. I w if it was... Like, I wonder that, did you see... I forget which Hunger Games movie it is, but the one where Jennifer Lawrence goes back to her home and finds her sister's cat. Yeah. And stuffs the cat in her bag. And then is able to continue walking around and picking up other things. And that cat never jumps the fuck out of that bag. Yeah, the and cat. She's no. walking around with the bag that is not moving and meowing. And you're like, you yeah, know, that's not how that's not how cats work. You had to imagine the other people on the flight as this slowly progresses. First, you have the fuck you. First, you have the cat deal going in the bathroom. Then you have the crazy lady. Then you have the punching. All of a sudden, you look out the window. There's the Air Force. Yeah. I would be like, am I asleep right now? Did I? I don't remember. Because it sounds. Did I do all the drugs? Does this not sound like a fucked up dream? <laughs> it's. I was on a. Okay. I had this dream. I don't remember stumbling into a David Lynch movie. I was on a plane. And this lady had a cat, but it was in her bag, but she wasn't supposed to have the cat. So they put it in the bathroom and then the lady punched the stewardess and said something about the mafia. And then there were the Air Force. And then I woke up. The mafia of everyone. You invoke the mafia. Yeah. I think the first thing we learned tonight Board your cat. Board the fucking cat. Have, find a very nice person who will take care of your cat while you are away. Love of Christ, board the fucking cat. I wonder if they're going to bill her for the, for the, the, uh, the fuel those fucking F-16s had to burn. Those things are not cheap to run. You put those up in the air, that, they mean that shit. Yeah. That's expensive. We've learned that when you're in the Ikea, 
Don't draw dicks on everything. Just because they give you a pencil does not mean you have to draw dicks on everything. Come on. Or at least write really Swedish sounding names on the dicks. <laughs> Bjorgen? Sven? Like, draw, the, draw the... If, if you're going to do like dirty graffiti at the Ikea, find the products with dirty sounding names <laughs> and illustrate what the name sounds like. <laughs> Flurgen Herbal. Flurgen Herbal. Fun game. It's like categories. Yeah. We've learned. We've learned that uh, when you get out of jail, do not immediately, immediately do something to get right back in. <laughs> At least go home. <laughs> Take a break and see your mom. Have, and a have a sandwich before you go on another crime spree. Just take a minute. Take a breather. Take like an hour. You know. Get a soda. We've learned that while you may think you're crusading for the rights of your fellow citizens, if that shit's a crime, don't put it on Facebook, you nimrod. <clears throat> I'm so fucking sick of Facebook criminals. I have... Jesus Christ. Incompetent mother... We've learned that when you gotta go, you don't gotta go in the bushes. We, we have evolved as a society to create specific places. Although, now that I said the word evolved, apparently toilets are actually not optimal for pooping. pooping. Like you're supposed to be, humans are supposed to be like hunt, like crouched. With your spine straight. So maybe that's his deal. I, I don't know. But, you know, poop on your own lawn. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Poop on your own lawn. If you want to squat over the ground, squat over your own ground. And finally, we learned fighting fire with fire may not mean <laughs> what you think it means. Not literal advice. No, that's not, it's not what science. Speak. That's not science. How does somebody that stupid get allowed out without a chaperone and a helmet? How can you be that stupid and function as a human being? How can you remember to breathe air and eat food and not like just go subatomic from forgetting to exist? Like, how do you not become an existential black hole of your own fucking stupidity. I'm not really a good person to ask that question. <laughs>